Hi, it's Jason here at Fraser Valley Rose Farm, and if I do say so myself, the farm looks wonderful right now. I don't take full credit. Late season moisture has kept many of the landscape plants looking wonderful. So I'm going to do two things in this video. First of all, I'm going to take you for a quick walk around and show you some of those landscape plants that continue to impress late in the season here, hopefully inspire you to add some to your garden. But second, and maybe the more important point of this video, is to get you to the propagation greenhouse. I want to show you the results for the season, some of those plants that I've been trying, succeeding with, failing with, uh, show you those results and maybe answer those questions around how late do I continue taking cuttings into the year and how do I plan to take those through into the spring. Well, let's go. Totally volunteer Cleome and as you can see it continues to open new florets right at the top of the spike here while the old ones turn into seed pods down lower. This one's just a volunteer sunflower that got away from us. We never would have planted anything quite this big or thought it would fit in the garden, but it's sure showing off. Still getting tons of color in our mini roses. And this used to be our cut flower garden last year. And kind of interestingly, it looks like we have a snapdragon that's just popped up here uh, amongst the roses. Uh, it complements it nicely, I think. Well, I hope this angle is doing justice to the steely blue and smoky purple colors of this vertical grass, which is Andropogon, holy smoke. And peeking out from behind it there, this one is Penicetum redhead with those gorgeous red puffs on it. This gorgeous mass of purple foliage here is actually an annual. It's a Perilla or Shizo, which is in the mint family, and also a... Uh, a feature of Japanese cuisine. Uh, I guess they serve it with sushi. And uh, this yellow flower that's nestled into it is uh, Rudbeckia. And I believe this is Little Henry. So a variant of Henry Ellers. And I just love the flower form on that with those fluted petals. Well, somebody's going to recognize this beast of a plant as weedy in their own area. Well, it's not as common here in the Pacific Northwest. It's called American pokeweed. And apparently those dark black berries that you see featured here uh, are used in dyes. I saw this originally in the Montreal Botanical Garden as a much smaller plant and let it grow out here. And of course, it is just stunning, although I'm given to believe that it will self-seed pretty aggressively. So I will be eliminating some of this pretty quickly here but I do love the architectural look of its hanging fruit as it uh, as it flowers out and it is just bold 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 probably topping out to about 12 feet here something to be said for how late the cut flowers uh, put on a, a show this is chocolate cosmos in the center by the way that I've integrated into this planting of the annual uh, cut flower varieties, Cosmos towards the front. I believe that's in a variety called Limelight, and you can see sort of a, a limey glow on some of those blooms there. And then of course, just a whole mixture of a bunch of zinnias towards the back here. And uh, obviously this one is going to be a uh, ringium. So we've tried to make a real display out of the cut flowers, and all of these were more or less direct sown fairly late in the season because we had such a wet spring uh, and holding its color nicely into the fall. One thing I love to see is the color variations in the seedlings of my favorite perennials. This one is Heliopsis Bleeding Hearts, which has typically orange with red center flowers and those dark, dark foliage. Well, here's a chance seedling of it that's just popped up low down in the garden. And this one is almost pure red by in the flowers and still has that dark foliage on it. Yes, the rose intrigue is buried in here somewhere, but got a nice display from a Gallardia here. This is a Burgundy Gallardia that just keeps on putting on a show way late into the season. And yes, now of course I can see those blooms of uh, the rose intrigue popping through. Again, looking wonderful late into the season. Quick update on some roses that I had trying to climb this pergola here. And this is the Impressionist putting on a valiant try for its first year uh, in the position. And of course I've been propagating from it as well, but I do want to give out major props to Blushing Lucy here. And I'll give you a sort of a toe to head shot here, but let's say that Blushing Lucy totally 
understood the assignment. And it is a rambler, so it has an advantage that way, but wow, jumped up this whole thing in a single season. Way to go Blushing Lucy. Would not hesitate to try this climber again. This is all from seed. And this is a cup and saucer vine, uh, both in the white variety and in the purple variety, all wound up together also against this large pergola structure. And wow, what a great show. Here's a perennial standout. This is a variety called Phlox Blind Lion and uh, quite uncommon here in the North American market. But just look at the color on that because the buds almost look like they're very, very tight, deep red or almost purple. It comes off almost as black or deep brown or mahogany. Gorgeous color and knock wood if I can find some. I see no signs of powdery mildew on this phlox at this point in the season. These yellow wax bells and those who have been following the channel know we moved these from a sunnier spot where they were struggling last year and doing so much better here underneath the shade of these crab apple trees. And just a dash over to the right here, and I know it's hard to get an impression because I've cut this up so badly, but this is a variegated hydrangea that I've been propagating from. And I'll show you the trays of that inside, very excited. Well, this was the destination all along. This is my propagation greenhouse, kind of segregated this one here to land my cuttings after I've taken them and push them into larger pots and grow them out for sale. Everything on the floor here, everything on the bench back there. I'll give you some close-ups of these here. But what I'd like to really show you is the diversity of plants that can come through a very, very similar method. All of these more or less started under humidity domes in trays uh, just from fresh semi-hardwood cuttings during the growing season and I got a good range of roses of course uh, perennials and uh, shrubs as well so let me show you some of that diversity here first the roses and show you some results here all of the roses on this bench here would have been potted recently uh, from cuttings taken from a month to maybe about three months ago and this variety here uh, Eden has just been potted in the last few weeks and of course now you can see that it's got gorgeous roots all the way to the bottom of the pot so that is uh, that is a success story there and uh, talking about these pots for a second this is a little bit larger than what you've seen me propagate in before I used to use a smaller or shorter nine centimeter pot but having that extra soil volume in there is what we're hoping will help us to send these to our customers with a little more energy and resilience so that there's very little question or far less question about whether they'll thrive when they land in a customer's hands and they pot them up to go into the garden Here's that hydrangea that I was showing you in the garden and these cuttings were taken only in the range of four or five weeks ago but we're already ready for a potting up step. Macrophylla hydrangeas are, are actually quite easy to root and so uh, what I was hoping to show you here is this wonderful variegation that's still showing up on the cuttings has those sort of cream edges but also some some darker green colors in them and just sort of like a camo pattern of, uh, of variegation that I'm quite excited to have and and this is uh, as I mentioned hydrangea uh, Marisia variegata. Well I can't really call it a propagation video without some sort of hands-on portion so I wanted to demonstrate something very quickly with this variety here called Persicaria dimity and this is a patch pulled out from the garden and what you can see is that it wants to root all on its own basically just running along the ground it's going to continue to go ahead and root and root and root so you might think the easiest method is just to let it root in the garden and then just pull it apart and that would be fine uh, but the other thing that I've done here is I've just gone ahead and pulled these apart preemptively so you might be able to grab a stem like this and cut it into a couple of sections and then just stick a section like that so sticking that like there you end up with sections like this that uh, will root into the tray uh, pretty readily because that's what this variety will do and then you end up with them all pre-separated like this so uh, instead of waiting for it to divide in the garden having to pull it apart what I have here is I have 45 of these that are ready to root all on their own and then they are separate for separate plants that I can go ahead and put into potting straight away without having to pull them apart and disturb the roots and damage them that way Way. so it is kind of a hybrid version of taking cuttings you can see if you look close at the stem here that they were actually starting to put out little rootlets 
all on their own there. So there's very little question about whether a section like this with a leaf and with a root on it is going to go ahead and root. A section like this is almost a sure thing. And while we're getting our hands dirty, I wanted to show you a couple of varieties of hydrangea here that I've taken cuttings of. This first one is a variety called snowflake hydrangea, something with distinctively lobed leaves, very double flowers and great fall color. And the story behind this, and by the way, yes, beautifully rooted, story behind this is that a nurseryman in the U.S. Uh, was told about this growing wild in someone's garden, uh, went there to grab some cuttings and found that the mother plant was in really, really poor condition. With the permission of the owner, of course, took some cuttings to try to preserve the variety. Well, they went back to their nursery with, I think, three successful cuttings uh, and then came back a few weeks later to find that a nursery assistant had thrown those three into the compost. So the nurseryman uh, staged a rescue finding them in the compost and only one survived so this whole variety was hanging by a thread of, of extinction basically an exceptional backyard variety uh, that was saved by the efforts of one nurseryman and of course now I've got a full tray of them here uh, very easy to take from cuttings I guess from healthy plants and you can see it's struggling with the impulse now of whether to grow whether to put on its fall color whether to go into dormancy because the day length is telling it to wrap it up for the season uh, that may be what's happening over here as well this is an Annabelle hydrangea and now I sometimes get the question from people if my cuttings lose their leaves are they done for and emphatically in this case no uh, this one has lost its leaves but as I pull it out you can see it's got good roots coming actually it's actually rooted pretty heavily up and down that stem and with hydrangeas there's always a chance that they're going to go dormant for the winter and then shoot back again in the spring uh, it may show some leaves before the end of the season now or it may not and that's fine but either way uh, the fact that these hydrangeas have rooted means that we have a good chance and I can just overwinter them like this and then they should shoot again early in the spring so if they lose their leaves don't give up hope so the landscape still looks wonderful, lots of successful cuttings in there. It leaves open the question, should I keep on going and press my luck, or should I stop now and let everything hard on, harden off for the winter? And it is very tempting when you see plants in good condition, putting on fresh growth, you know that's good for cuttings, you know you can root it, whether you should give up for the season. And then of course it just turns into a matter for pure logistics. And in my climate here, yes, we get a mild September, October, even November sometimes, but do I have enough time to harden off the plants fully so that I can overwinter them in an unheated or minimally protected environment? And the answer is coming on to no, actually. Probably have another week or two of cuttings that I could risk it with. But if I keep on going after that, I have to be prepared to handle some logistics and what that means is that after I root my cuttings I'm going to have to overwinter them protected like warm temperatures uh, all the way through the winter until the early spring so uh, I guess what I would say is I'm not discouraging keeping on going until late in the season obviously I'm going to keep on doing so myself uh, but you have to know your own climate how much time you have left if you're in Southern California you've got all sorts of flexibility on this. You're in New Zealand, lots of flexibility. If you're in Iowa, you may have to cut it off a little bit shorter than even here, uh, or make those arrangements so that you have a heated space indoors that you can sort of minimally keep heated, even to low temperatures, but not freezing, not low freezing or deep freezing. They can't go out after this point. After rooting it, you don't have enough time to put on the the full set of roots and the full kind of hardiness to those cuttings so that they can make it through either unprotected or outdoors with cover or minimal protection. This of course is my indoor propagation room. Under humidity domes is how I start most of my cuttings and I'll link the video where I discuss that method. Uh, and this is a tray of cuttings that were taken just within the last week or so. I'm going to continue to propagate in here but the idea to let you know is that this room will actually convert over to an overwintering space uh, within a couple of weeks. After I've put on the initial roots to this current batch of cuttings and maybe the 
the next week or two of cuttings. After that, anything that is well rooted will indeed graduate out to those outdoor greenhouses. And this space in here will be maintained above freezing all winter with minimal light. It has some natural light. It has some of those artificial lights that I can put on behind it. But basically I'm not trying to cook things in here. I'm not trying to keep it tropical or everything in super active growth. Once I've got the initial rooting done in the next couple of months, I'm going to turn down the temperature and just carry them over at a low temperature, almost dormancy, getting into the late winter and early spring, and then I'll push them back into growth outdoors. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you had, uh, you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please drop those into the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.